And uh, we continue our lecture with uh, systemic bacterial infections, and we start with plague. Uh, it's a systemic infection. Uh, it's a historical infection. Uh, we know about plague since Middle Ages, when a third of population in Europe was killed. And still today, until today, uh, in the desert areas, uh, we still have uh, some animals infected by this uh, microorganism. So, plague is uh, caused by a Yersinia pestis, which is a gram-negative cocobacillus. Uh, guys, please remember, uh, if you hear cocobacillus, uh, usually it means uh, the organism is very virulent, very aggressive pathogen. Uh, the source of infection usually infected rodents, uh, for example, squirrels, uh, chipmunks, uh, prairie dogs. Uh, infection is transmitted by fleas, by fleas. Uh, there are a few forms of plague uh, we have to know, and the first form, this is what we call bubonic plague. Uh, bubos means enlarged and inflamed lymph node. Uh, so basically what happens when a person gets bitten by flea, uh, the pathogen will be injected into the uh, person's skin and then uh, it will move to the lymphatic system. It will travel to the uh, closest lymph node, uh, will stay there, and that ex that's explain why uh, the lymph node becomes large and uh, tender and inflamed. So uh, this is what we call bubonic form. Then from there, uh, the pathogen might move and spread into the bloodstream. And in this case, patients will uh, develop what we call a septicemic uh, plaque. Uh, one of the specific symptoms of septicemic plaque will be uh, destroyed uh, blood vessels uh, of the skin. As a result of uh, damage of the blood vessels, uh, patients will uh, develop subcutaneous bleeding. Uh, so basically, the skin of those patients will turn black. And uh, that's why septic septicemic uh, plaque is also called black death. Next form, it is a, what we call pneumonic plaque, and it is a fatal form. In this case, uh, pathogen will spread in the lungs, and guys, as a medical workers, you have to remember about this uh, form of plaque, because usually uh, medical workers uh, get infected with this form of uh, plaque when they take care about um, infected individuals, uh, infected patients, and uh, if they don't uh, follow uh, the precautions. As I said, a pneumonic plaque is a, a fatal form, and as you see, there is a 100% of mortality rate of this uh, form of plaque. Uh, treatment. Uh, for the treatment of this infection, uh, we're going to use uh, antibacterials, so for example, streptomycin uh, can be a drug of choice. And uh, vaccine is available today. Uh, we usually offer uh, this vaccine to the high-risk individuals, uh, for example, biologists, archaeologists, I mean, people that are working in the desert. On this slide, on the left side of this slide, you see a picture of uh, Yersinia pestis, which is cocobacillus, gram-negative cocobacillus. Uh, on the right side, the top picture shows you enlarged lymph node, this is what we call bubos. Bubos, and on the bottom uh, right side of uh, this slide, uh, you see a subcutaneous bleeding, and you, as you see, the uh, skin of that person uh, basically turned black of uh, because of the cap that is damaged. Uh, next, systemic bacterial infection is tularemia. Uh, tularemia is caused by Francella tularensis. Uh, which is again gram-negative cocobacillus. Uh, as a medical workers, you have to know about this highly contagious infection. Uh, the source of infection will be animals, uh, for example, rabbits, uh, the most common source of this infection in nature, or of course infected uh, individuals. Uh, usually, uh, infection is transmitted through direct contact, and when also uh, people uh, get in contact with infected uh, animals, 
um, they get infected in this way. Uh, so if you look at this picture, uh, you'll see uh, that there is a small uh, sore or ulcer on the surface of the skin of that individual. Uh, this is the entrance of uh, infection. Um, if you as a medical worker I will work with this patient and uh, will not use gloves, uh, it would be enough for you to touch that little tiny lesion uh, in order to get infected. So from that ulcer, from that lesion, uh, usually pathogens go to the uh, regional lymph nodes. Uh, this is uh, their first stop. Uh, they, uh, they will sta stay uh, in the regional lymph node, grow and multiply, so lymph node will be enlarged and tender. And then from there, a pathogen uh, moves into the express into the bloodstream, and then patients will develop symptoms of systemic infection. Uh, high fever, chills, headaches, some patients might develop pneumonia as a complication. It is not very difficult to diagnose this infection. We can either uh, culture uh, the uh, lesion on the surface of the skin or we can use a uh, diagnostic test when we're looking for presence of antibodies in the patient's serum. Uh, for the treatment, uh, we're going to use antimicrobials. Uh, for example, streptomycin uh, can be a drug of choice. And we continue with the Lyme's disease. Uh, Lyme's disease is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi, which is a spirochete. Uh, this infection is fairly new. It was discovered in 1975 in Lyme, Connecticut, uh, when pediatricians uh, suddenly had a lot of uh, patients with uh, arthritis, and uh, the source of the arthritis couldn't be in, uh, couldn't be in, uh, explained. So as I said, uh, the source of infection will be animals, uh, for example, mice or deers. Uh, infection is transmitted by uh, ticks, and that explains why uh, usually we have a lot of outbreaks of Lyme's disease in the May, uh, in the summer, means when uh, ticks are active. Uh, there are three phases in this infection. Uh, the first phase is the easiest phase to diagnose this infection. It's called bull's eye rash. Uh, this is a circular um, red rash, very distinctive rash, uh, that surrounds the bite. About 75% uh, of uh, patients will develop this uh, symptom and as I said this is the easiest stage of uh, this infection uh, to be diagnosed. And then uh, rash disappears spontaneously and several weeks later the second stage uh, begins. Uh, during the second stage, uh, patients uh, develop uh, symptoms of uh, systemic infection uh, because uh, a pathogen goes systemic and gets into the bloodstream. So patients will develop headache, uh, muscle aches, fatigue, uh, fever. Uh, some of those patients might develop uh, stiff neck uh, as a symptom of this stage and some of those patients might develop meningitis and, or have a heart damage. And then uh, about six months after the infecting bite, uh, the late stage uh, begins. It's expressed as a chronic arthritis that may persist for years. Occasionally joints, especially knees, swell painfully for months. Uh, infection is uh, treated with antibiotics, for example, dexacycline, uh, amoxicillin, or erythromycin. On this slide, you see on the left side, you see a picture of uh, Borrelia burgdorferi. I told you it, it is a spire kit. For spire kits, we do not use gram stain uh, procedure because they have different structure of the cell envelope. Instead, uh, to look at them at a microscope, we use what we call dark field microscopy technique. And uh, using that technique, actually, we can see how spire kits move on the surface of the slide. The next picture is a picture that shows you a bull's eye rash, very specific symptom for Lyme disease. And the last picture is a, a picture of tick that tra transmits uh, this infection. Uh, the next systemic uh, bacterial infection is anthrax. 
Anthrax is caused by bacillus anthracis, which is gram-positive bacillus. Bacillus anthracis is uh, gram-positive bacillus. Uh, it has ability to form uh, endospores, and this form it can be found on the surface of certain uh, plants. For example, roses can be a source of uh, anthrax uh, in the nature, or on the surface of the uh, domestic animals. Also, you have to remember that Bacillus anthracis has ability to produce very powerful exotoxins. Actually, it has ability to produce three different uh, exotoxins. Uh, the source of infection will be infected domestic animals, uh, plants, roses, for example, or infected humans. Uh, the most common uh, form of anthrax is cutaneous anthrax. Uh, infection uh, begins from little tiny blister uh, on the surface of the uh, skin. Uh, eventually, that blister will develop into what we call a blackened crater. It means uh, the lesion becomes larger and goes uh, deeper uh, into the tissues. Most of the cases of cutaneous uh, anthrax uh, will uh, heal uh, spontaneously, but as you see, uh, in 10 to 20 percent of cases, uh, that pathogen might get into the bloodstream and then uh, infection becomes life-threatening uh, and systemic. Uh, for the treatment, we can use antibiotics, uh, for example, penicillin or uh, ciprofloxacin or cipro. Uh, there's another form of anthrax you have to know. It is what we call respiratory anthrax. Uh, it's a dangerous form, life-threatening form with uh, bad prognosis because usually from respiratory tract, uh, this infection spreads systemically, gets into the bloodstream. And remember, uh, bacillus anthracis can, has ability to produce very powerful toxins. Unfortunately, those toxins uh, can cause uh, hypersensitivity reactions uh, that lead to cardiac arrest and respiratory failure. Once again, uh, this form will be treated with uh, antibiotics. And the last form, it is a gastrointestinal anthrax. It's not very common form and usually occurs when uh, meat of infected animals is eaten by people. Uh, on this slide, you see a picture of cutaneous, cutaneous anthrax, and this is what we call blackened crater. When lesion goes uh, deeper into the tissues and becomes larger, and the reason why, uh, because remember, uh, bacillus anthrax can, uh, can produce very powerful toxins, so causative agent for this infection will be toxins produced by uh, bacillus anthrax. Uh, next uh, systemic bacterial infection is uh, what we call cat scratch disease. Uh, cat scratch disease is caused by Bartonella boncillae. Uh, usually this infection uh, affects uh, children and uh, uh, the main symptom of this infection will be extremely enlarged and swollen and uh, uh, lymph node. Usually, uh, you can see this uh, enlarged lymph node in the, uh, under the arm on, a, on the groin area of uh, those children, and it can be as large as a tennis ball. Uh, you have to remember that usually that lymph node is not painful, not tender at all, and children have no uh, complaints. And usually, uh, parents uh, bring uh, those patients uh, to see doctor. Uh, and if you look at the uh, skin of uh, uh, arms or hands or legs, uh, you will be able to see uh, healing scratch marks. Uh, infection is a self-limiting infection. It means uh, those patients will recover without any specific treatment within uh, one or two weeks. But if you prescribe antibiotics, uh, for example, rimfamfin or cifro, uh, antibiotics will just uh, speed up recovery uh, of those patients from infection. And uh, we continue uh, talking about uh, bacterial infections that actually caused by rickettsia. All rickettsia have uh, the same characteristics. All of them are small, 
rod-shaped bacteria. Uh, there is no gram stain reaction because uh, all we get here are intracellular parasites. All rickettsial infections are transmitted with arthropods, lice, fleas, and ticks. And we start with uh, first rickettsial infection, which is a Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is caused by rickettsia rickettsii. Infection is transmitted by ticks, lice, and fleas. And the main symptoms of Rocky Mountain spotted fever will be a, a, a high fever and rash. Why rash is a specific symptom of this infection? Because uh, this pathogen multiplies in a smooth inner lining of the blood vessels. Of course, it causes damage of the blood vessels and they start leaking. Uh, the early symptoms of this infection will be fever, headache, vomiting, which means symptoms of intoxication. And then specific spotty rash will appear on the surface of the uh, skin. Uh, also, you can imagine, uh, imagine that uh, this pathogen will multiply in a smooth inner lining of the blood vessels of internal organs. Uh, it will uh, lead uh, the damage of the internal organs and capillary damage, they start uh, bleeding. Uh, it's very difficult to diagnose uh, this infection uh, because uh, the pathogen is a, a intracellular uh, parasite and uh, uh, the mortality rate uh, for this infection will be about 20%. Uh, usually um, patients die from bleeding, abnormal clotting reactions, uh, as a result they get in shock and die. Treatment, uh, for the treatment we're going to use antibiotics. Uh, the next rickettsial cell infection is typhus. Uh, there are four forms. There are two, excuse me, two forms of uh, typhus: uh, epidemic form and uh, murine form. Uh, epidemic uh, form is a more aggressive form of typhus. Uh, murine form is more mild form of typhus. Speaking about epidemic typhus, uh, usually we have outbreaks or epidemics of epidemic typhus when a lot of uh, people are displaced from uh, their homes. For example, uh, during the war or uh, during the uh, immigration. Uh, and once again, it is transmitted uh, by uh, lice, usually lice. Uh, the source of infection will be infected individuals or uh, animals. Um, Infection is systemic infection, uh, so basically, uh, once again, because uh, pathogen multiplies in the lining, lining of small blood vessels, uh, patients will uh, develop uh, a very specific rash. Uh, besides rash, of course, patients will develop uh, severe symptoms of intoxication, unbearable severe headaches, high fever, chills, muscle aches. Uh, and uh, a lot of those patients become unconscious. Uh, and as you see, uh, the mortality rate uh, for, that, for this infection will be about 40%. Uh, for the treatment, uh, we're going to use antibiotics. For example, tetracycline can be a drug of choice. And then urine typhus, it's a mild form of uh, typhus uh, transmitted by fleas, lice, uh, once again uh, from uh, infected uh, rodents, mice, rats. Uh, the symptoms of urine typhus are very similar to symptoms of Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And very often uh, those two infections um, are misdiagnosed. But that is uh, not a big problem because the treatment of uh, both infections are, is the same. We're going to use uh, antibiotics and for example, uh, chloramphenicol, uh, tetracycline uh, can be drug of drugs of choice.